Welcome to my latest jewellery design in ZBrush 2019 Next Generation Techniques course. Now, a while ago, I produced a course on Udemy um, jewellery design in ZBrush 2018, complete jewellery course. And I decided to expand on that course and show you a plethora of new techniques that you can use to control the detail in jewellery design. And remember, this is being 3D printed. So the way to control the depths and the tolerances of jewellery is really important in jewellery design. So I've created this course. Um, I'm adding sections to it. I've completed the course now. It's uh, six sections. And we finish off by doing this pendant, this turtle pendant and i'm going to be adding a few more sections on the ring uh, within the next uh, week or so and then i think you've got the most complete course that you could have on zbrush and controlling detail i've actually actually just directed myself to making sure that i'm covering all the points that i think you guys as jewelry designers want to hear and try to make it in a way that's quite simple to follow and will give you the flexibility to be able to use what I'm teaching you in your designs. So we're going to have a look at jewellery design in ZBrush 2019 next generation techniques, key points of this course. We're going to be discussing unit size and measuring. We will create easy to see the depth cages. So we'll be creating depth cages and helper cubes. The so depth cages will basically be around it um, at a certain tolerance. And you'll know if you've hit those height depths or those um, extrusion depths, as well as those um, sort of embossed um, depths as well. So as well as that, we're gonna be exploring Scale Master for resizing a single or multiple subtools. I'm going to be showing you how to scale non-uniformly, so on two axes instead of all three or on one. We're going to be creating and controlling curve on surface brushes. So I'm going to show you how you can create your curve on surface brushes and how you can set those depths for a particular height. We'll also be looking at the expansion and compression of the curve by using the curve graph. We'll be understanding and applying UVs to both sculpted tools and brushes. We'll be controlling detail using texture driven masks. We'll be using morph targets and layer controls across multiple defined areas of our model. You will learn how to create clean topology and be able to project high resolution details onto low resolution tool, as well as how to reflow topology from Dynamesh and extractions to get clean topology. We'll look at extractions and how we can create clean workable topology inside of ZBrush. This is really important for when you DynaMesh or you do mesh extractions. We'll also be looking at arrays and um, being able to take a pattern and spin it around as well as symmetry and repeating patterns using some of the symmetry tools. We're going to look at polygroup and discuss the importance of of, it, of polygroups, especially when selecting or modifying a tool. And I'm gonna show you how to reduce your polygon, polygon count from millions to thousands, and how to export and upload to shape ways. We'll look at how to save money on a print by creating a hollowed out surface. We'll also look at how to render from both ZBrush and Keyshot and comp them inside Photoshop for an amazing final render of your concept. So if you're not taking it to print, that could be really handy for you. After going through all the process above, we will end with a full working example per section going from start to finish. So I'm gonna add more sections onto this course. Um, I'm presuming I'll probably do another three sections. So there's gonna be up to section six. So I've gone section six, uh, we'll probably do seven, eight, nine. I might even do 10 and um, so it's this course is going to be updated so you've bought the course and i'm still going to be adding new content to it so it should be good 
So if we look at the course curriculum now, you can see how my um, structure of my course has been put together. I'm trying to break it into individual sections so that you can um, kind of use it as a reference and go back to it. So the first section is going to be downloads. I'm going to add a few more bits into here. Um, the first section we've got here is understanding scaling, setting up the ring bases, so the base rings. This is really important because this is your base. Okay, then we're going to move on to uh, working with booleans and cleaning the resulting meshes. So after that, we're going to work on brushes and control, control of those brushes inside ZBrush. So this is a whole brush section here, massive, because I think it's really important. We're also in this section going to break into other areas such as creating arrays and repeating pat patterns, box modeling and hand retopology. So I'll be showing you a few different methods to get the same results and it's up to you which, which method you want to use. Then we're going to have a look at extraction techniques. Now this is very powerful with ZBrush 2019 being able to extract and then clean up our topology to usable topology, low res usable topology to easily be able to polygroup and control. Then we're going to go on to hand sculpted detail where we're going to actually work on the turtle and then we're going to use layer controls to actually control the height of the detail that you've sculpted into the model itself. So that's going to cover sections five and six which will take us down to here and I'm also um, putting in here how to export and how to upload this to Shapeways and any problems that you might have with your meshes and how to fix them as well. So as I said I'm going to be doing a section 7, 8, 9, 10 probably and but this is a self-contained course here. You don't need to take this jewellery course part one that I've done on Udemy. This is a standalone course and unlike this original course where I used the Ringmaster plugin we will not be using Ringmaster in this. There's too many problems that happen with it. It's an unsupported plugin now. It does work, but it's a real pain. So I'm going with more trusted techniques where you're manually doing it. And to be honest, you're doing it just as quick and you'll have control and understand what you're doing. And that's the most important thing. So let us um, move on. And yeah, if you like this course and it looks good to you, it's packed full of features then check it out and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the lectures. Uh, also underneath all of the lectures themselves, I've got um, references to my Facebook group. Make sure that you join my closed Facebook group so that any problems you have, you can post your problems on there and I can solve those with the community. And also if I need to, I'll add more lessons into this course or I'll do free YouTube videos to show you how to rectify any problems that you have during this course. So I really suggest if you're into jewelry design or any kind of uh, work where you're trying to produce something in 3D, um, especially these kind of rings, pendants or sculptures, this kind of thing, then this is the course for you. This You won't need any other course. This will tell you everything you need to do. And I spent a lot of time on this and I've made sure I'm covering everything. And like I said, your access to me means that if you do have any problems, I can update things and make it even better. And like I said, I'm going to be adding more sections. After you buy this course, I will be adding more sections. I should get down to about section 10. Um, but I might do a help section as well where I upload videos where you've asked questions or you've got potential problems with something. Okay, so hopefully I'll see you in jewelry design in ZBrush 2019, next generation techniques very soon.